Hi everyone. <laughs> Just let you guys jump on. We're a little late. <laughs> And just a reminder, we do have our small biz talk and we have Robbie here and we have a guest. Oh, there's some people. We have Liz Stevens. And we were going to have um, someone that was going to handle more of our financial questions, but something came up last minute um, as they do with businesses. So she had to take care of that and we will move that financial um discussion to another date but we still can talk a little bit about finances today oh hi <laughs> all right all right thinking about finances thank you crystal for inviting us back again this month i'm robbie melton with the small business development center and this is liz stevens and she's my senior analyst so she's the numbers lady. And um, so, you know, we were gonna talk about finances today. And again, we're probably gonna try and do that again in July. What I would like to say about that is, you can't be good at everything, right? And so some people are really good at managing, some people are really good at vision, some people are really good organizers, some people are really good at finance. Um, and one of the things we wanted to talk with you about today is how to delegate. You know, when you're first starting out in your business, you're a one-person shop, right? Mm -hmm. And you got to do everything. So one of my friends, he is hilarious. He's a videographer, and he decided he wanted to go out on his own. And after he'd been in business for like three months, he goes, Robbie, I can't believe I'm working seven days a week, almost 24 hours a day. And I said, welcome to entrepreneurship. But you don't have to keep doing that because one, it's not sustainable. So you have to learn how to let go and let other people help you. So one good thing is figure out what are the things you're really good at and one of the things that you're not so good at or where you need help. And so like I have Liz, she's great because she's had two of her own businesses she knows financials really well. So I'm able to delegate to her some of my hard projects and she can just do that. And I think one of the things why I'm able to do it with Liz is we got to know each other and I trust her. So you wanna be able to have a trusted person that has experience. So I think that's one of the key areas to let go. The other thing is, Raise your hand if you're a control freak. So that's my problem. Yeah, you people in the back over there. So we have, we have an audience today. And so. Which is what happened to me. So figure out where you need help. And it's okay to ask help. Actually. When I tell people I have somebody who's trying to do it all herself, and I'm like, but you need to let people in because you can't really grow your business until you let people in. And one of the things that I really like what Liz said is when you do delegate, it's also important to give good instructions so people know what they expect of you, and also you have to follow through. So you can't just hand Crystal something to do, like go make me this dress, and then leave her without giving her any instructions of what it should look like or what's the deadline that you need. So you also need to um, be able to do that. And um, it's great when you can ask for help. It's also a relief to yourself because then you have a little ah uh, time, you know, take a break, go to, um, the beach or something that you enjoy because you got to have me time. So um, are there any things you think about when you think about delegation or help having people help you in your business? Well, I, I think you touched on it a little bit, Bobby, but I think um, key in any business 
for a relationship is just communication. And it just seems like um, we think we communicate enough, and sometimes we don't. Um, so I think key is just to really communicate your expectations. Ask the other person if they have any questions or um, anything they need to know, instructions. And then maybe, maybe set a deadline and then, and then see if you need to reach out with them in between and then make yourself available for questions. And that keeps the, it keeps the communication open and you're, you're actually co-creating. That person's helping you create your dream. Yeah, I love that. So you made, you made me think about something that drives me nuts, micromanagers. So you have to trust the person enough to give them the assignment and maybe occasionally check up on them, but don't be giving them minute by minute instructions, what they need to do, how to do it, how to say it. I had a boss that did that. And he would call me up and go, well, you need to contact this person and this is what you need to tell them. You know, so there was no autonomy in that. So being able to like, uh, I'm thinking of this one company as you also, as you were talking, she started a company and actually it's like her fifth company and she has five companies going at once. But the great thing about her is she has people to help her. So she brought a person on to do the administration and this woman was highly capable. And so she did all the sort of day to day while um, the owner of the company actually went out and did the work. And so that's another thing to think about. So which reminds me there are, there are services out there. Oh, like there's a virtual assistant. You know, you can hire somebody that can just organize for you, or you can hire bookkeepers. We have somebody in the audience today that's a CPA. So you can hire somebody so they worry about your finances, how to put it in order, when to pay your taxes and all of that. Um, bookkeeping, marketing. So people outsource their marketing all the time. Some people even outsource their social media because that takes a lot of time. And like me, I'm not that good at it. So I'd rather have somebody else do it for me. So people might be thinking, well, how am I gonna pay them? So that's something that you would work out with um, whoever comes on board to help you. And then maybe through that consulting work, you might be able to hire that person to come and work for you. So do you have any other things to add? With letting go. Um, well, part of it is just finding the right people. So if you, if you have um, a little bit of information just to interview the people you're going to let go to and, and get a sense of, um, Besides the brainiac, just your gut feeling. I think that that's really huge. And we don't talk about that too much in business. Well, but I think it's a, a big one. Yeah, I think that's true. You know, checking them out. And, you know, Kauai is a small island. So the great thing is the coconut network or coconut wireless <laughs> is really important because everybody knows everybody just about. And so you can check them out. Like if somebody refers you or you meet somebody, Somebody you know probably knows that person that you can reach out to and say, hey, you know, can you give me some feedback about that person? But networking is so important. So being able to join like the Rice Street Business Association, the Lahui Business Association, on the west side is Hanapepe, any of the Rotary Clubs are really important ways or Lions Clubs are ways to connect and meet people. And that way you can find people that you can, you can eventually you know, trust and build a relationship with. I think that's, that's really key. Like you said, go with your gut, because I think your gut um, says what. The other thing too, as I'm thinking about that, is we have this client <laughs> that, you know, you can't just bring not anybody on board because you want to make sure that they have the skill set. So don't be desperate that you just bring anybody on without really um, interviewing them or getting to know them to make sure that they fit. 
Oh, no tapping. So I wonder if the audience has any questions. Oh, hey, Sarah. What are you drinking? It's new Pure Leaf Low oh Sugar gosh, Tea. <laughs> it's got 85% less sugar than the regular sweet tea, but it still well, has all the taste. Oh, I think it's... Okay, there, oh, there it goes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Does anybody have any questions on the line? I know it's really hard to let go because you think you know everything and it's your business and it's your baby. So I started 20 years ago, I started a nonprofit organization to help women entrepreneurs. And, you know, you kind of have that ego going, like I know everything, but you really, I had 70 volunteers working with me, you know, because I knew I couldn't do it all and I didn't know it all, you know, and I didn't have the energy. So even though I was working, you know, 20 hours a day, I still needed 70 women to help me run this organization. And again, it's giving them the freedom to give their input, you know, and allowing them to be themselves because they can bring stuff to the table that you may never even thought of that's just gonna make your business better. So that's the other really good thing about it. And so this organization I started is now on their 20th anniversary. And we have 14 chapters around the country. And all of that is run by all these volunteers across the country. So it's pretty amazing if you just let people be a part of it and be involved in it. I think for me too, it kind of crosses over to that idea of when does a hobby turn into a business? We had that question come up before. And for me, it was when I finally realized like I'm building a product that someone else should also be able to build. So I should already have that knowledge of how to pass that or delegate that on. And I think that was a big turning point for myself because otherwise if you create a product and it's a one of a kind, you're creating a niche, but it, you know, unless you have a really, really good niche that you can do something quality one of a kind in like an artistic sense, um, it's really hard to compete as a, a business with that kind of product mindset. That's true, and it reminds me, years ago, um, there was a company that I worked with, and they actually, this is wild, they were a high-tech company, and they built a software that could track movement of cars, movement of people, so they could track criminals. Even though criminals travel from different country to different country, he had software, but he was a control freak and he felt like he had to do it all himself. And he was unwilling to train people how to do it. And sadly, they didn't go anywhere because he couldn't let go, you know? And that's the thing, you have limitations. So even if you're developing one of a kind jewelry, maybe you have a group of people mm -hmm. helping you to do that or to replicate that. So that's a good point. Um, sorry, I stepped out, but did you talk about, I think the other hurdle is like the idea of paying someone. Yeah, so I, I think there are different ways to pay people, um, especially if you're doing part-time, how many hours, you know, you do need to pay people. You can't expect people to work for free, especially if you're running a business so you have to build that into your cost structure and what you charge people. So I think that's very important that nobody should work for people. So again, in tech, because that's the world I come from, in tech people might get equity stakes in a company in exchange for working for free up to a certain amount of hours or whatever, but then they're going to get investment and all of that. When you're a small company, there's no equity in your company. So you have to build that cost into your pricing structure. But you do need to pay people. Well, and another thing I think it brings up, like for me, I, um, I, had, I was in retail, one of my businesses, and I um, actually trained people to be able to run it when I wasn't there. Because what if something happens to you? Or, you know, it should be able to run you know, so I, I empowered them and they, they had certain limits and then they just 
had to come to me and it was great. You're selling this stuff, just play it how you want. Doesn't, you know? Yeah. So I think that was key. I was, I didn't have a problem going on vacation once a year thinking, oh, because they, I trained them to be good. I think one of the fears I think some owners have is that that employee will take what they've learned and run and start their own thing. Yeah. But I don't know if that's the, it's all about attitude. And, yeah. I think that's the minor part of it. I think most people don't, that's happened a few times, but in most cases people aren't going to run off with your business because one, it's still hard to start a business, right? So they're not going to, and it's great that you felt like you could go on vacation and you needed to trust them. So I think that's another aspect of it is, you know, because you do need free time, as I've been saying, to do that. So, yeah, that's very important to do. And I believe there is a way to protect yourself if you wanted to. You can't have them sign a three-year non-competitive um, that just allows you a little bit of peace of mind. I mean, they still could go off and steal your business, but at least this is a, a more of an agreement that you guys are in an understanding way. Like that would really. It depends on the type of business because back in 2015, Hawaii passed a law that tech companies cannot have non competes. Okay. And um, so, again, it depends on the business that you're in. Specifically, like doctors, they have non competes because if they bring you into their practice and you go move two blocks down and take all the patients, mm -hmm. that's not fair to the doctor. So, there are ones that are protected with non competes. Mm -hmm. But for generally most purposes, they're not going to take your business or take your business like you. And then, so I have a client now that's doing something that's very common. And so he's worried that somebody's going to steal their idea. I'm like, well, the minute you open your business, people are going to see what you're doing. And if they do take your idea and implement what you're doing, that's just a, um, what do you call that? Pat on the back. Because <laughs> you had a great, what's that? Capitalism. Capital, yeah. <laughs> so they like your idea. So, so my, my other thing, you know, with artists is I say, look at Heather Brown. Heather Brown came out with the most revolutionary design of her artwork and nobody had ever done it that style before now everybody is copycatting her you know but is she out chasing them down going oh you can't do that no because it's sort of a form of flattery you can't stop people unless you're doing something highly engineering or highly scientific where you would get a patent otherwise you know it's just kind of how it is these days so we have a few more minutes if we wanted to, I don't think, no one's put up any questions. Is that a question? Nope, it says, I love what you doing so much. You should be very proud of yourself. <laughs> very nice. Aww. We like that. Yay. That's a good comment. That's a good comment. <laughs> So the other thing, you know, I work at the Small Business Development Center, well, we both do. And so if you're trying to figure out how to juggle things and how to delegate and what's the right way of going about it, you can always contact our office. And so at the Ala Coco Shop, they have our business cards and information on how to get in contact with us. But don't be afraid to delegate. Don't be afraid to ask and say, hey, I could use some help with this. And um, I think you'll find that it makes your life a lot easier, for sure. Definitely. All right. Well, maybe we can just kind of go over some of the things for future. Maybe we don't know exactly what month, but some of the topics. Oh, yeah. Should be. So unfortunately, today, we were going to do finances. So we will be talking about business banking. Because people want to know, well, what's the difference between me having my personal checking account and a business account, and what do banks or credit unions offer, you know, in terms of business banking, how it's going to help you. We'll also talk about loans, because a lot of times new businesses need loans, so we'll be talking about that. Another month we'll be talking about patents, copyright, trademark, 
What are the difference? How does that fit into your business? What does that mean for you? Because not everybody can trademark or copyright. So my company is called Women in Bio. And we wanted to trademark the name because there's no women in bio out there. Well, the patent office came back and said, no, you can't do that because the name is common. Each word is common, bio, women, and in. So we couldn't trademark our name or copyright our name or any of that. So, you know, anybody else could name their company, but nobody did. So, um, so what are you talking about that? Cyber security. Cyber security is another huge issue. And, you know, you think you're a small business and that it doesn't really matter or it doesn't mean any. But I've had a few companies here in Hawaii, either because the national software they use got hacked into or something else happened. So we want to talk a little bit about that as well. Any last words you'd like to share wisdom? Only if they have topics that they want to see discussed, to put it in the chat or send a link. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then just a reminder, um, we do these once a month. And the topics will change. This is for a la Coco, the a la Coco shop. It's a monthly mentorship, which is free. We have a 30 minute live session here. And if you'd like, you can come and stay after and that way you can do more of a one on one. And it won't be in a group discussion for everyone to hear. But uh, just within our small group that is here one on one. So you can always sign up for that. We're on Eventbrite for any of those. And again, the Ala Coco Shop is for local businesses. We provide services, a retail service, so you can uh, sell your things. And it's kind of like having a pop-up shop set um, six days a week that you would just leave your things and then not have to worry about it. The other thing is we do offer these types of workshops, um, any kind of help that if you have questions about growing your small business, either myself or I will put you in touch with someone who can kind of help you along the way with those questions. And yeah, so stay tuned and thanks for joining us. Aloha. See you next time. Okay. <laughs>